Alrighty guys, well, welcome to the video. So today what I wanted to do is my ultimate RAM overclocking guide. And this is definitely something that has been um, a long time coming for the channel. It's something that a lot of people are really interested in learning how to do because RAM overclocking can give you a really large performance uplift in a variety of games. And especially with the newest CPUs like the 5000 series from Ryzen, or the 12th gen and 13th gen from Intel, it really has come down to um, basically RAM overclocking as the final defining thing that makes either platform better than the other in terms of raw performance. And so it definitely is something that you guys are gonna wanna kind of you know pay attention to and kind of have you know some uh, care about when you're making your system. And so going forward, I wanted to bring up all of the different warnings and overclocking can potentially void your warranty. Not everyone is the same. Some manufacturers don't have this policy. Overclocking is something that carries significant risks and potentially can damage your PC if done incorrectly. There is no guarantee of any kind of safety. If you proceed forward, you are doing so at your own risk and fully accept in the unlikely event you may have damaged your PC beyond repair, including all personal property and devices. Please consult with others online going forward and please ensure all items are safely stored and downloaded. Now, this is obviously a pretty extreme warning, but most of the time you will be probably just fine. It's very unlikely that you actually are going to be having any sort of major problems occur when you're doing any sort of overclocking, especially RAM overclocking, because it's pretty hard to do in terms of cause a whole lot of issues unless you punch in really bad voltages, which we will go over what those need to be. And so, what do you do if your PC does not boot or is a black screen? Well, what's likely happened is that your CPU is unable to support the RAM frequency or the timings that you have requested it to do when you're overclocking. This is something that is totally normal. It's very common to see your PC not boot, and it basically is nothing more than just an indication of some minor instability. Now, the main thing that you're going to want to learn how to do, and you're going to want to get very comfortable with doing this, is knowing how to do a CMOS reset. There will be likely a button or there will be a battery or there will be another button on your motherboard where basically it's called the clear CMOS button and what that does is it basically resets your BIOS back to the default operating values. This is something that's really useful especially if you are um, encountering a lot of black screens and you aren't getting a lot of recoveries like in terms of when the BIOS recognizes that it can't support it so it does it automatically for you. So you're going to want to learn how to do that and get very comfortable with that because it's going to be something that's going to happen a lot going forward. And so then starting off next, what is the um, XMP? The XMP is essentially the um, overclocking values that you're going to be getting for your specific RAM kit. It'll going to include the generation. It'll include the obviously the timings and the voltages. On each one of these sticks, you're going to have different timings and voltages for each one of them. So it's important that you check which ones they are and make sure that especially um, if you're planning on doing a lot of overclocking with your RAM that you make sure that you have like high-end quality RAM kits like Samsung beat eye and so that's the main thing and then going forward after that we're gonna talk about the voltages now these voltages are not the maximums they are dialed back by about 50 to 100 millivolts from the actual true maximum values but I wanted to give you guys the um, most likely safest values that you guys can punch in for your system and so for the system agent voltage, that's going to be 1.35. There are some people that go up to at least 1.45, but I don't recommend doing that. IO voltage is the same way, 1.3 to 1.35. Core voltage is what controls the actual CPU core voltage in terms of the frequency that it supports. So if you plan on doing CPU overclocking, which I do plan on covering later, then you're going to want to make sure that you increase your core voltage. And then your DDR voltage or your DRAM voltage, that is going to be what's on your XMP kits. And so that's going to be usually in the range of about 1.3 to 1.45. It can go a little bit higher depending on if you have a really good quality kit. And so that's just the main values that you're going to want to look at because higher is not always better. Sometimes higher can cause more instability. And so then going forward with Intel 12th gen and 13th gen, the voltages are slightly different. But the main ones are SA voltage, CPU VDDQ, VDD2, and then RAM VDD, and then RAM VDDQ. Again, there are a lot of voltages for Intel's 12th and 13th gen, but most of these values, again, like I said, have been scaled back by about 50 to 100 millivolts, give or take. So that way you guys know that these are not going to be pushing your system to its limits. It's just going to be the kind of 80% of the way there kind of thing. 
and then for AMD, the thankfully AMD is a significantly easier overclocking um, mechanism, and all they really have is just the SOC voltage. And there are a lot of different people online that will fight tooth and nail for what the proper SOC voltage is. But AMD recommends don't going above 1.2, and most people recommend don't going above um, 1.2 as well. 1.25 is sometimes seen as the max, and with Ryzen 7000, it's like 1.3 to 1.4 but I don't recommend going any higher than around 1.2 because it's gonna be very unlikely that you're gonna to need to go that much higher. And then obviously the core voltage and the DRAM voltage. So the DRAM voltage again is independent, so it's the same. And then the core voltage is going to be slightly different for um, the AMD chips just because um, Intel's chips can run slightly higher voltages, but they both can run pretty similar in terms of uh, rough averages, give or take. And so another thing too is to keep in mind the silicon lottery. One person may be able to use less voltage at the same specification and be stable. Yours may not be. So it does require some experimentation and you have to be um, aware of this process and that it's not a one size fits all. So if you see the timings that I provide, just know that your kits may not be good enough to support it or your chip may not be good enough to support it. So you have to kind of keep this in mind going forward that there will be some um, fudge factor, so to speak. And then the next thing, this is sort of a quick and simple one, but there is something known as topologies on your motherboard. And what this means is essentially there are only two, really there are three, but it's only really two that most people have. It's T topology versus daisy chain. Most motherboards nowadays are daisy chain, which are better for overclocking and they mostly work better with two dims. But there are motherboards out there that have four dims that have basically better they run better with four dims in them rather than two. And so you just have to look up your motherboard. There's no real easy way to tell which ones do. And so you'll have to look it up for your motherboard and you should find information about it online. And then finally, here are all of the timings. And this is going to be a really complex and really um, long guide in terms of explaining all of these because there are a crap ton of different voltages and timings that go along with RAM overclocking. So this is the Intel timings for, let's say, um, Intel's 10th gen and previous. So this will be also a little bit applicable to the 12th and 13th gen, but it'll be slightly different. But going forward, I'm going to be outlining a lot of the different rules that I have noticed when doing any RAM overclocking. And so the ones that are highlighted with colors are going to be the ones that are connected to each other. And so the blue ones are going to be connected obviously together, the green ones are gonna be connected together and then the red ones, same vice versa. But the main thing is that for the blue ones, you'll notice that it says plus or minus one. That is because when you start to push these values to their lowest amount, the only way that you can get a lower value, so like, like if this is TRDWR, if I raise the primary timings to 15, 15, 15, I will no longer be able to use 9, 9, 9, 10. It won't support it. But on the TCWL side, if I raise this up to um, 15, 15, 15 as well, or I raise this up to 15, I can lower it on TCWL. So if I go 15, I can go down to 99910, or if I go down to 14, it's the same, where I can go up or down one tick specifically relating to each one of these values. But you have to be careful about it because it's not a perfect formula. It's definitely not something that I would say is like guaranteed to be exactly this way. Sometimes it'll be a value of two, so you'll have to keep that in mind going forward. And then for the green ones, the TRDs are connected with the TFAW, and you're going to want to make sure that you use a multiplier of four and the lowest value you can get for almost all RAM chips is four on both of these values and 16 for TFAW. Motherboards and CPUs sometimes have a minimum value that they will support and 16 and four are the lowest for these values. And so that's the main thing is that if we do four times four, then that's how we get 16. And going forward after that, the TWTR and that is going to be connected to TWRRD. You'll notice that if you raise or lower these, these will follow in suit. So these will go up by one or go down by one, depending on if these go up by one or down by one. That's just a good connection. So if you guys are trying to do RAM overclocking and you have found the lowest values that your CPU can support for these, then you're gonna wanna make sure that, you know, you're not tweaking these at the same time and then wondering why your system can no longer boot because it might be that you're pushing these values lower. And then if you're trying to push these values lower at the same time, it might not go any lower than that. 
And so then finally, the yellow is essentially a representation of what do these different um, letters mean over here. So S, G, D, G, DR and DD. What this stands for is same group, different group, different rank, different dim. Now there are things called ranks and then there are things called dims. Dims are the physical slots and the physical, um, you know, ram sticks themselves. And ranks are the amount of uh, essentially chips on those dims. And so if you have a two by eight kit, what's very likely is that you have a two dim or single rank kit and so the only timings that apply for the two dim single rank kits is going to be the same group and different group timings. If you only have a two by eight kit, then the different rank and different dim timings do not apply for you. They are not used by Intel when you do your RAM overclocking. So you can set these down to like one or zero and they'll post just fine. It's literally how it works. And so with four dims and dual rank or four by eight and two by 16 kits, if you have those, then all of these apply. So the same group, different group, different different dim. So on my board, I have a four by eight kit. Then that means that I have to worry about all four of these timings. And most of these I have found to be the lowest values that you can get with specifically RAM overclocking and within, let's say, tolerable voltages. So definitely not the safest ones that I recommend, but definitely the highest that you could potentially go. And so that's the main things and so that's going to be the main thing you're going to want to look out for when you're doing your ram overclocking is that most people will not be able to go past around 3800 megahertz maybe 4200 megahertz depending on how good your board is because most intel chips kind of cap out at that frequency and most ram chips kind of cap out at that frequency there are some memory kits out there that can go past around 4200 ish but they're generally um, really bad with the timings. And so these timings are going to be specifically for Samsung BDI because it can push the Intel memory controller pretty much to its lowest values that it can support. And so then going forward, one thing that a lot of people don't know about RAM overclocking is that you have to be very careful about um, heat in your system because if your RAM chips get too hot and you run a stress test, this can completely fudge up the results and you may get instability that isn't caused by the RAM timings themselves being unstable, but is rather unstable because the temperature is getting too high. And so this is why I recommend that if you guys have a you know high-end GPU or you have a bad airflow case, that you check your RAM temperatures because if they get too hot, it'll really make it difficult to understand you know what are timings that are just too low that my system can't support. And what are my timings that are too high that, you know, I'm, what are my temperatures that are too high to where I can't stabilize this no matter what I do, no matter how much voltage I throw through it or anything like that. And so then this is also the AMD timings as well. AMD is a little bit different. Their tertiaries are significantly different than Intel's, but theirs are a lot easier to um, figure out. So with AMD, the SCLs are going to be the main ones that you're going to want to focus on. And then everything else is basically inside of here is also the, around the lowest values that you can get. You can get these slightly lower, but this is about as good as it's going to be. And so I recommend that you guys kind of follow this metric for AMD. It is going to be slightly different, but it's definitely something I'm more familiar with, with the Intel side with their RAM timings. And I've only just barely had an AMD chip for its RAM timings as well. But again, like I said, these will, these should get you basically 80 to 90% of the way there. And so, yeah, guys, that is going to be it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this style of, you know, presentation where we have a lot of the, um, you know, fun slides and stuff like that. Hopefully it's a little bit easier to watch and hopefully you guys enjoy this kind of content. Let me know how it goes for you guys and what you guys are able to achieve. And if you found this kind of video informative and helpful, please leave any um, comments, likes, you know, please subscribe. It definitely helps out the channel a lot and it helps make this kind of content going forward. And so, yeah, guys, have a good one. My name is Savaterix and I'm out.